Hello and welcome, my name is Larissa and I am a freelance artist and today's video is sort of going to be a double purpose. I'm going to make this a bit of an art vlog and I'm going to talk about my creative process and how I handle the beginning stages of an art commission. And I'm going to do some time lapse speed paints of a current commission that I'm about halfway through. In my previous art vlog, which I will link down below, I actually already talked about what I consider the first step of a commission, and that is the conversations between artist and client leading up to actually beginning the commission. So in this case, I've already had multiple conversations with the client leading up to this particular project. We've ironed out the dimensions, the type of medium, we've talked about all the details and items that need to be contained and represented within the composition. And I have loads of wonderful, awesome reference photos of all the different animals and the landscape and everything that the client wants to actually include in this project. So now that I at least think I have a really good grasp on what the client actually wants, I consider that step one, research done. Check. My next step will be a series of rough thumbnail sketches, which are pretty much what they sound like. I will draw a series of very small sketches that are very rough and contain just the very basic information to lay out approximately where things are going to be on the finished product. In this case, the client was asking for a 30 by 40 inch canvas. So I made my thumbnails three inches by four inches, and I just included the most important aspects of the composition and made a series of those. And then depending on how firm I feel about the compositions, sometimes I will send the client one that I think is going to work fantastic and includes everything they've asked for, or if they were a little more vague about what they wanted, or they didn't have a ton of details or something, Thing that would be limiting my composition, sometimes I will send them several to choose from, or sometimes I just don't have a very good grasp on the style or what they're looking for, so it is always a beneficial thing in that sort of situation to give them options to help guide me in the right direction. As the artist, I have often found that the client gets a little nervous at this point when they see these little tiny rough drawings. Sometimes they get a little worried, like, oh, but what about this? That's not on there. We talked about putting this in, or why isn't it this, or whatever. And I have to explain to them because it's only this big and we're going to be making it this big. I obviously can't put every single detail into it. This is basically just to be like, you are asking for this, correct? These two things sitting like this in this sort of a space, in this sort of an area. And then that's just sort of a jumping off point. Sometimes if I'm doing one of my little fashion illustration type drawings and they're only one sheet of normal size paper, then I don't always do the thumbnail sketch. I jump right into doing the actual illustration on the paper and keeping it to light pencil sketches. Again, I might not throw in all the details, just the basic pose and dimensions so that the client can start to get an idea of what everything's going to look like. But for something as large and complex as this project, I definitely wanted to do the thumbnail step. And that is step two, thumbnail approval, check. Once the thumbnail is approved and I have a good idea of what the overall composition is going to be, I can start moving that on to the canvas. How much detail I put into my sketch on the canvas varies greatly from piece to piece. Through the process of painting, a lot of the times I'm going to be laying down a layer of paint that's going to cover a whole area anyway, so I know there's not much point in sketching that out just to paint over it again. Then other times I definitely need to have certain details in my sketch so I know where to line things up or whatnot. So again, that's something that can vary from project to project, but I definitely always try to get in at this point the basic main important shapes and try to include a decent likeness of anything that needs to be recognizable. 
for instance, this commission is focused mainly on the client's two dogs, and then secondary are the client's six cats. So I definitely wanted to make sure that I had all eight of these figures portrayed on the canvas and any of them that are going to be close enough to the viewer while looking at the canvas, I definitely wanted to make sure that I had some recognizable features down. But I'm not going in and putting every little whorl in the fur or anything like that, just the basic, very distinctive figures and marks of each of these different characters. Then, once I have all the important information laid out and sketched onto the canvas, I take a picture of that and I send it off to the client. So now the client has seen the full composition with all the most important bits and characters on it, and they can get back to me with any tweaks or changes that they would like. For instance, in this case, they were worried that the dogs, which were supposed to be the focus of the image, might be a little bit too small. This is where you have to really have a good connection between artist and client. I did agree that it was definitely possible to make the dogs a little bit bigger, but I did have to explain with all the different things that they were wanting to include in this composition, which is a surprisingly busy project for one picture, that it wasn't really possible to make the dogs drastically larger. But this is where my training and experience as an artist comes in handy, because I was able to explain that sometimes just making something bigger isn't the only way to draw focus to it. There are all kinds of wonderful tricks that I can use to make sure that the dogs are still the focus in this case. For one thing, I absolutely love atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric perspective is a way of describing how things that are further away from you are going to be a little bit fuzzier, less distinct. They're not going to have as much detail or as much contrast usually. And that's a good way to make something recede into your image. In this case, the far background is the sky and the mountains, moving forward into a mid-ground of rolling fields of sheep, and then the foreground is going to be the dogs and the table that they're sitting at. Dogs sitting at a table, drinking wine, I absolutely love it. I think this is going to be so much fun. So the atmospheric perspective is going to accomplish two major goals for me with this picture. First of all, it's going to help add that depth of field and make it more obvious that the mountains are way in the back and the dogs are way in the front. But second, it's also going to make the dogs seem much more important by them being obviously right up in your face. That's obviously what you're supposed to focus on. Yes, your eye can roam about and you want it to. You want your eye to sort of wander about a composition. You don't want it to stay locked on one thing the entire time. I like to really have the eye moving from detail to detail, but always coming back to those most important features. One of the things that the client was very excited to have included in this picture is all of the sheep in the field because these are sheep dogs. But this is very helpful for me as the artist because I can use those sheep to really show that the depth of the field is definitely changing. By having the sheep that are closer to the dog and therefore the viewer be larger and then gradually getting smaller as they recede towards the mountains.
I hope you found this helpful and inspiring. If you did, please like down below. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I will definitely be updating on this project in the future. This is definitely a work in progress. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you next time.